Dear colleagues, we continue <clears throat> our working day. Leonid Matuchin will uh, be uh, giving his update in 20 minutes, and then we would like to invite Vladimir Arya from uh, Petro Poroshenko block and Georgi Legvinsky from uh, Narodny Front, People's Front, and they will talk about the results of the Ukrainian of the work of Ukrainian delegations in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe and our plans for the future. Good afternoon, esteemed colleagues. Uh, I would like to tell you about the uh, results of the work of our delegation during the winter part of the session of the PACE. And first of all, I would like to say that uh, we uh, Ukrainian delegation has not have uh, such a successful result uh, like during this um, winter session. For the first time in many years, Ukrainian delegation was working as one single organism without dividing into those who are in power and in opposition. And that was because the previous authorities were not taking into account the demands and requirements of the opposition. This time we managed to unite our delegation around one goal, which was the main one. During this session, the issue of non allowing the return of the delegation of Russian Federation to the whole of Pese and restoring the Russian delegation and its rights was discussed. That was the most difficult issue because Russian lobby in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe is traditionally strong. What is the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe? It includes the country's participants of the Council of Europe that signed the statute. Ukraine is the member since 1996 and Parliamentary Assembly and these are the representatives of the parliaments of those countries which are members of the Council of Europe, according to the quotas. The Ukrainian delegation has 18 places plus 18 deputies. The Russian delegation has 12 places plus 12 deputies. There are delegations of different level of representation, but especially this time, Russia was trying to do a lot to uh, try to get back to the uh, session hall of the Parliamentary Assembly. It was unprecedented that the delegation of uh, Russian delegation included Narishkin, the head of the Duma. Usually the heads of the parliaments are not the delegates to the Parliamentary Assembly. And for Russia, that was exceptionally important issue. We could also feel absolutely different level of motivation that was suggested by Russian delegation. Besides, we understood that um, many delegates are afraid of uh, excluding Russia uh, and are afraid of confronting Russia. On the other hand, we used the maximum number of arguments and by our united work, we changed the situation, which on Tuesday seemed to be hopeless, but on Wednesday was 10, 180 degrees. I especially would like to thank all the members of the delegation, without any exceptions, for this very coordinated and active work. We worked as one single organism, as one single team. I would like to thank especially the delegation of Great Britain, Baltic States, Poland, Georgia, Germany, Northern European countries, uh, Nordic countries. I believe that thanks to their position, we win one. And we, it's not just Ukraine that won, but democracy and uh, justice. During this session, Ukraine very seriously worked on uh, Parliamentary Assembly of uh, the Council of Europe, defining in their resolution several very important moments for Ukraine. First of all, the resolution on the situation in the humanitarian sector of Ukraine, humanitarian 
catastrophe in Ukraine. The Putin's humanitarian convoys were condemned. Also, Putin's intervention and financial support of, by Putin regime of the combatants in the east of Ukraine was also condemned. Besides, they condemned the violations of the rights of Crimean Tatars and the activists in the occupied by Russia Crimea. In the report uh, on the freedom of speech in Europe, uh, it was condemned uh, the persecution of mass media in Crimea, especially Crimean Tata TV channel ATR. And just the day before the beginning of the session of uh, the Parliamentary Assembly, uh, there was a search in the office of this uh, TV channel and also resolution on uh, 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 depriving Russian delegation of the uh, uh, powers uh, was important and also uh, uh, the very important part uh, on sanctions we had doubts that it would be passed but just the amendment to one of the paragraphs changed the situation one thing that the session demonstrated was that when Ukrainians work together when they work in coordination, when they are united around some goal, they can achieve some unbelievable result. And the politics as the art of impossible is absolutely possible under such conditions. Uh, now, Georgi. Uh, thank you, Vladimir. Thank you, all the present. Thank you, all the citizens of Ukraine who supported us. I would like to emphasize that, first of all, the meeting uh, during the session of the Council of uh, Europe was more like a performance, the performance that was uh, uh, played according to a certain scenario that Russia was writing for the last six months. They were finding any arguments to convince uh, the members of the Parliamentary Assembly uh, to return the parliamentary Russia to the parliamentary assembly. And when we started to work, we saw that there are some uh, agreements which uh, cannot be broken in um, any way. And the performance, the scenario cannot be changed, but we can uh, uh, just stop this performance. And that's how we were working. We were trying to find any opportunity to find any crack there, and we were using all the arguments we could. And I would like to underscore that Russia was expecting that we, uh, when 30 MPs uh, uh, that we will demonstrate uh, some something. They even prepared some speaker, and we do not understand who gave them the opportunity to express the idea that the report uh, and the main thesis were the same. Please uh, understand and forgive. That is how Mr. Shona made the report, and it was very negative. The report itself and its motivation part defined that Russia is the aggressor, that there are troops, uh, that uh, the issue of uh, weapon supply is uh, condemned. Uh, they condemn the issue of uh, financing terrorism and also the issues on Crimean Tatars, on Mustafa Jamili, Frifat Chubarov. We were uh, also touching upon the issue of the freedom of rights in Crimea for citizens who are there. But uh, the conclusion was to cancel the sanctions. It was impossible to understand. It's like for killing, you give just, uh, you impose some fine on the person. But we were exercising a lot of pressure. We found ways uh, when. Uh, we basically submitted about 30 amendments to the monitoring committee. 29 of them were rejected. You can understand what the majority, what the Russian Federation had only one that was a key amendment we managed to insert there. We were pressing in different ways. We were uh, addressing them in the uh, session hall. We were saying, 
please uh, excuse you uh, for you have forgiven pre uh, Transnistria and uh, then Nagorno Karabakh started you forgave uh, Nagorno Karabakh uh, Russia annexed Crimea and started war in Donbass now you will apologize them for what they do and you will be the next ones and these are not the jokes because a year ago you could not imagine that this could happen in our state the situation cannot be allowed when uh, uh, the force of the law was uh, more than the rule of law more than uh, what is happening in the Council of Europe. That is why I'm grateful to everyone. I appreciate all the support the people have given, the people who have not uh, uh, basically uh, fulfilled uh, any um, agreements. Most of the political parties had uh, agreements, and they uh, did not ask Ukraine, what do we think about that? The main question was, why did Russia want to go back to the Council of Europe? They wanted to demonstrate that they will be unpunished in the future, that there will be no um, reaction to what they are doing. But now we demonstrated to the whole world that this will not happen for every, every action that is committed in Donbass and in Crimea, Russia will be responsible. It will be in isolation um, till uh, they do not stop uh, acting against our citizens, till they liberate the Crimea, till they withdraw their troops from the territory of Ukraine. That is why now we are convinced that the activity of our delegation and again, I would like to emphasize all the members of our delegation were working for the sake of Ukraine. And that is why I would like to thank our delegation. I would like to thank everyone who supported us, the Prime Minister of Ukraine, the President of Ukraine, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, our friends from Baltic States, from Georgia, who despite everything, they were helping and they did everything for our country to have peace. Thank you. Uh, in this case, I would like to just add, uh, if you have question why this victory was important, this qu uh, victory was important not just from the moral point of view, but that gave an opportunity to our troops to the servicemen who defend our country, who learned about such a big diplomatic victory uh, that raised their um, uh, spirit, and now they are even stronger defending Ukrainian lands from terrorists and barbarians. Also, Russia wanted to get victory in Europe to justify their actions, to demonstrate them. Well, look, they support us. Look, they want to see us. They want to have a dialogue with us, despite the fact that Russia shows that they do not want to conduct any dialogue. And that is why this victory meant only that Russian actions, Russian bribes, Russian pressure uh, does not, do not succeed in the EU. And those people who are part of the Council of Europe they hear the truth, they hear the arguments, and they understand uh, where the justice is. And that victory is important, not just from the moral and diplomatic point of view, but physically you can feel it. Because the world will continue sanctions against aggressive actions of Russian Federation. In a different case, we could have had the absolutely different arguments from the Western world. They could have weakened the sanctions and maybe the situation would change, would have changed to the benefit of Russian Federation, but this did not happen. One clarification, we saw how they were bargaining about Nadia Savchenko when this issue will be resolved. There were no bargain uh, on uh, Nadia Savchenko, uh, 
uh, Russians uh, were uh, distributing rumors that Ukrainian delegation is ready to uh, exchange the um, right of vote in the Council of Europe for freeing Nadia Savchenko, but Nadia Savchenko wrote a letter to the delegates of uh, Parliamentary Assembly and there were no bargains. She did not want Ukraine to bargain about it. She did not want to be used in this bargain deal because that woman has a dignity and iron will not to become such exchange coin. Another thing is that Russian delegation, as always, was using such uh, uh, things uh, they were using such uh, methods which uh, are now the style of their work and they were uh, distributing lies inside of parliamentary assembly there was no type of such bargain but with that the committee on regulations approved the resolution on uh, absolute recognition of the immunity of Nadia Savchenko as the member of the Parliamentary Ascension and the President of Parliamentary Assembly sent the requirement to free Nadia Savchenko to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Lavrov. Another thing is, despite the fact that the immunity of Nadia Savchenko is guaranteed by the Geneva Convention, Russian side ignored absolutely this proving again that uh, they uh, are not uh, they do not want to execute any requirements of the council of europe but also uh, when russia was taking some commitments when it was joining the council of uh, uh, europe to refuse from the concept of uh, nearby foreign countries and to withdraw their troops from Transnistria. That is why in April they will again discuss the issue of Russian uh, uh, membership and uh, uh, this issue is on the agenda and if according to the resolution 2034 that was approved this time if Russia uh, 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 changes, uh, does something, then uh, its uh, rights can be returned. But if not, then the sanctions will automatically continue till the end of 2015. Any questions to our speakers? Uh, could you say which rights could be given back to Russia if Russia does something? And uh, what are the powers of the Council of Europe or some mechanisms how to pressure Russia. Uh, the Council of Europe addressed, uh, the Parliamentary Assembly addressed Lavrov, but he did not react. Now there are no diplomatic mechanisms as to return liberating Savchenko, but after the resolution of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, the Committee of Ministers will, and the General Secretary will be, start working on that in accordance with the norms and principles of cooperation of the Council of Europe of the European Union. This could be also, could become part of the policy of European Union, theoretically. And I believe that this will be done because uh, there were certain steps made at the level of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine. I am not authorized to inform about that, but I have absolutely clear information about that. As to return, uh, uh, returning rights to Russia, paragraph 15 uh, uh, provides for depriving Russia of the right of vote and participation in the Bureau and the Standing Committee of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. And there is a clear list of what is to be done. And if this is done, and that is withdrawal of the troops from Crimea, renewal of the control over the Russian-Ukrainian border, basically, absolutely uh, um, returning the situation to what was the situation a year ago. Then the Russia will get uh, 
the right to vote. Otherwise, Russia will continue to be under the sanctions of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe in accordance with this resolution. Because all these terms are very strict and no one is going to change them. From your permission, as to Nadia Savchenko, I would like to explain a little bit. Nadia Savchenko now is in Russia and she's detained there. There's no sentence of the court, and according to the Constitution of Ukraine and Russian Federation, she's not guilty. When on the first day of the work of the session, the uh, powers uh, of uh, Nadia Salchenko were confirmed. She received the diplomatic immunity of the Council of Europe. That is so-called accreditation. I can show it. And that uh, says uh, on the last page that all the members of the Parliamentary Assembly, including Nadia Salchenko, according to the agreement on privileges and so on, are equal to high executive uh, authorities and they cannot be arrested or deprived of freedom. She has to receive the, uh, uh, she, she um, should be allowed to go to any parliamentary assembly session and be able to go back. The Russian MPs who are now under sanctions, they're using that and we saw all of them at the session of the parliamentary assembly. That is why I would like to emphasize that she has a diplomatic immunity. Russia has to liberate her in the nearest future. We sent the amendment, we submitted the amendment that Russia within 24 hours has to liberate uh, uh, Nadia Savchenko. If this does, is not done, there are certain international mechanisms and judicial mechanisms on how to force Russia to do that. We can press pressure exercise pressure on their diplomatic immunity according to the principle of solidarity and there are other ways and methods that we'll be using. Unfortunately, 24 hours are over. In this case, uh, this is uh, the control of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine and uh, we will probably uh, be um, appealing to certain entities, but that is the issue which is now under the competence of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you, colleagues. We hope that such diplomacy will give some results. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in